I'm going to say, make a couple of comments about bupropion, only to note that this drug serendipitously was found to be able to help people stop smoking. Uh, there are contraindications, which you're probably far more aware of than most clinicians, to the use of this agent, which is obviously fundamentally originally an antidepressant. Uh, but many patients uh, will report that taking the conventional doses of these products, they don't kind of like the way that they feel or that they have a dry mouth or a skin rash. Well, in any other area of clinical practice, when patients have side effects which are dose-related, we adjust the dose. In reducing the dose of bupropion in the face of these kinds of side effects generally addresses the side effects without significantly attenuating its ability to uh, help or maintain smoking cessation. Um, so, uh, once again, that point uh, about titration, and when bupropion was first, uh, uh, first uh, arrived, it was shown in contrast to, to nicotine replacement therapy to be very significantly uh, more efficacious, and when used in combination, the first hints about combination therapy was more efficacious again. Um, so, uh, final uh, comment about an agent, varenicline, which is a modification of a naturally occurring substance that occurred in, that grows, uh, pardon me, is found in the leaves of a shrub which grew in <coughs> Western Eurasia. During the Second World War, people smoked the leaves of this shrub as a tobacco substitute. Post Second World War, the Iron Curtain Eastern Bloc pharmaceutical industry used the leaves of this shrub as a smoking cessation aid. Um, the active ingredient, cytosine, not cytosine, cytosine, binds to the alpha-4 receptor, but not well. But if you modify that cytosine structure, you get varenicline, which binds avidly to this particular receptor, except that when it stimulates this receptor, the receptor only opens part way. You get overall less flow of ions, overall in aggregate less depolarization of underlying neurons, and therefore, in aggregate, less release in the forebrain of dopamine, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But smokers perceive this as, hmm, I don't really feel like I need a cigarette because I'm feeling okay. I got nicotine receptor stimulation producing dopamine and other transmitter release. And by the way, this is occupying that, that particular receptor site. And so if I do smoke a cigarette, I don't really kind of feel that I... So now we are able to use, if you will, molecular biology principles to address some of these issues. Now, that is not to say that this is the answer, uh, but we are certainly a whole lot further along uh, the road than we were in the past. The most common side effects of varenicline and anything which stimulates nicotine receptors are nausea and sleep disturbances. Why? Because you've got nicotine receptors in your gut. If you stimulate them constantly, you're going to get nauseated in exactly the same way if you chew nicotine gum very avidly and swallow the saliva, nausea will, will follow. So if you're using a systemic agent which is omnipresent around the clock, you're going to have perhaps nausea. You're certainly perhaps initially going to have some sleep disturbances, some insomnia, some unusual dreams because those nicotine receptors are not used to being stimulated during the night. Those symptoms, pardon me, generally pass uh, fairly quickly. Uh, in, in fact, it's kind of intriguing. Many of the responses we get from patients on varenicline are, yeah, I'm having unusual dreams, but you know what, they're kind of cool, and I, I can't wait to go to bed at night because I you know, <laughs> wonder what's going to appear, uh, appear this evening. But then there were the questions of neuropsychiatric and cardiovascular issues. And, and so clearly one of the zombie concepts that has persisted is that varenicline causes psychiatric problems, despite the fact that following the initial pharmacovigilance type signals, which are unbelievably sensitive but not specific, if you look at the use of varenicline in large populations or in communities where varenicline has been used for, for a considerable period of time, you find that there is no evidence to, to substantiate the view that these cause psychiatric disorders. Um, and that evidence comes from a variety of, of sources in a variety of communities. Uh, the U.S. military health system published uh, uh, this in late, 19, uh, 2000, uh, late 2012, comparing varenicline with, with um, NRT patch no increase in neuropsychiatric hospitalizations, overall reduced rates of inpatient and outpatient neuropsychiatric diagnoses, consistent with studies using NRT and, and varenicline uses in other settings showed no increased risk of self-harm, depression, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. At this point, let me digress. I live and work and play in a cardiovascular setting. 
I am old enough to be able to remember when statins, which are now the mainstay of the management of coronary artery disease, were first introduced. And I remember being in Toronto at the Toronto Con Conference Centre and hearing very learned clinicians and scientists say, hang on a second, there's evidence that statins are making people depressed and having suicidal thoughts and suicidal ideation. And we better be, you don't hear a single word about that now not because we're reckless in our use of, of, of statins, but because it's a, a common phenomenon when products are introduced that these pharmacovigilance instruments pick up these kinds of signals which are frankly more noise than, than, than signal. So I, I, I think one can clearly say um, that there, the evidence about the concern of varenicline causing psychiatric problems has, has been, has, is, is now dissipating. Um, this zombie had its origin in Canada um, because in an article which appeared in the CMAJ, uh, which was purportedly a meta-analysis of, of, of a sort, uh, the authors suggested that the risk of cardiovascular events in a meta-analysis of studies using varenicline in cardiovascular patient populations was 0.82% in the placebo group and 1.06% in the varenicline group. Now, in most cardiovascular pharmacology clinical trials, an adverse cardiovascular event, uh, or, you, you know, and this can just include irregular heartbeat for two seconds and the, the whole pantheon of cardio, this is pretty low. But this was interpreted by the authors as a 72% risk of serious adverse cardiovascular events in those that use varenicline. Why did this exercise pipe so much? Well, because I was involved in what was the largest single trial of varenicline in, cardio, in a cardiovascular setting. The largest group of patients in this meta-analysis came from our trial and all of our cardiovascular side effects, notwithstanding that this trial wasn't powered to be a safety trial, all of our cardiovascular side effects were independently reviewed. Um, and we found no signal whatsoever in that particular uh, meta-analysis, so we were kind of a little perturbed uh, by this. But fortunately, the British Medical Journal one year later published a more complete, more appropriate meta-analysis looking at the risk of uh, cardiovascular side effects from varenicline and concluded no significant increase in cardiovascular serious adverse events associated with varenicline use. So there's a lot of, no pun intended, smoke that swirls around the academic discussions of smoking cessation pharmacotherapy uh, and very often it takes some time for the smoke to clear uh, and that evidence just continues to accumulate.